So every PC enthusiast essentially wants to build the most powerful, most badass looking computer that they can, right? And for a long time, that has been my goal. And, you know, part of the problem is, uh, is, is, is financial stuff, but I've finally been able to, uh, to get there, mostly. Um, obviously, you know, if I could afford a, uh, an X99 with 128 gig of RAM and, like, all this other crap, a couple one terabyte solid state drives, like, that would be awesome. Um, but, but I got, I got a pretty decent system, and, uh, it's, it's fun to tinker with things. It's fun to do things with your own hands. So one of the coolest things, one of the best things that you can do when it comes to your PC is water cooling it. And that's why in this video I'm going to be giving you my take on a first time water cooler's experience, I guess. So I'm going to start out with a, uh, a nice little montage of my water cooling experience. Um, I kind of wanted to do a whole, a whole, uh, a whole video. Like I, w I wanted to do more with it, but I didn't really get a chance to, to record much because at the time I was, I was really pressed for time. I, I had a lot of stuff going on and I needed to get my, my computer together and running because this is what I use for work. Um, so, so I didn't get to record as much as I would like to have, but I did get enough to put together a little bit of a montage. So I am going to show you that here in a second, and then I'll come back and talk about kind of the challenges that I faced and, uh, things that, that you don't really, that nobody really tells you, but that are good to know. Thing, things that I figured out during the, uh, the water cooling experience. So, uh, so yeah, let's, uh, let's check that, that clip out. Okay, so there was at least one thing that you must have noticed, because it was quite obvious. There were at least uh, a couple of small ones that you might not might not have noticed. Um, <clears throat> the first one being the, uh, the overall loop. 
As you could tell, when I first put the loop together, I just had a 240 millimeter radiator at the top. And it turns out that while, while that size radiator is adequate to cool a, uh, an overclocked uh, Core i7-4790K, the fans have to run extremely loud, like extremely high. Like it's just, I like a wind tunnel sound or something. Like it was, it was insane. It was crazy loud. I could not deal with it. So I managed to get a, uh, a 140 millimeter radiator and, uh, and put that on the back. And that gave me enough extra cooling to where now the, even, even running a, uh, an Ada 64 stress test, the temperature doesn't break 70 degrees. In fact, it barely breaks 60 degrees. And that's only with the uh, <clears throat> the fans on the 240 millimeter radiator running at a fairly quiet speed. And then the 140 on the back will ramp up the full speed. But because it's a 140 millimeter radiator and it's a, uh, I believe it's the Corsair Quiet, the AF, the AF140 Quiet Edition. So it runs uh, more silently, um, but it still pushes enough air. So that thing running at full speed pushes enough air to keep the entire loop cool and barely makes any noise. So that's, that's what I was going for. And that's awesome. Um, the second thing that you may notice is the, uh, the CPU water block. It's, uh, it's in a different orientation from the way that I initially installed it in the video. And the reason that that is, is because the, uh, the capacitors, they go along the, along, around the, the CPU socket were in the way. So they were, they were holding it up the first time that I booted this thing up and it was, it was like up into the eighties almost immediately, but that turned out to be the problem. Luckily I was able to just rotate, I mean, well, I mean, I, I ended up redoing the, getting another radiator and redoing the lines anyway. But at the time, luckily, I was able to just rotate it and the uh, the ports were pretty much in the same spot. So it didn't really make a difference. One of the biggest questions for me was the size of the reservoir. Because there, there's, there's not much information when you look, especially when you look at measurements for different things. When you look at the measurements for like pumps and for sometimes radiators, um, I feel like one website will give you the measurement of just the pump or just the pump top or some will give you the measurement with the the whole thing but without the feet um with the uh, radiators some will just give you like the measurements of the fins or they'll just be different uh different websites will have different measurements so it's really difficult to know exactly um exactly which things how, how big something is without without actually seeing it but the big thing was with the with the reservoirs I bought a 250 millimeter reservoir and it is the uh, the monsoon MMRS reservoir and the uh, the height of it just the tube itself is 250 millimeters yeah 250 millimeters so the the little uh, the top and bottom pieces are extra so overall this thing's close to 300 millimeters it's a 250 millimeter radiator reservoir but it's totally in, in total about 300 millimeters in in length so that is something that you need to uh to, to take into account when you're looking at the uh at how much space you have for things and I kind of like I didn't want to get a small one because I thought it would look weird just having like a little reservoir and like a lot of extra space. So I wanted to like completely fill that space. And I'm not really sure how happy I am with that. I might I might have to uh, I might have to change out the reservoir at some point. The other thing was with the um, as you saw at one point in the in the montage with the uh, monsoon fittings. These things have like these lock collars and it's actually a really cool design because once once it's on there the there's there's no pulling the tube out of its connection like it's it's on there but you have to you have to buy this special like UV glue and at least on the performance PCs website they don't really say that but they say like watch this video so before you buy this product so that you know everything about it and it's a 30 minute video and it's not till 20 minutes through that video that they actually mention that there's a uv glue that you need to use with it 
And then they also, the, the video demonstrates using like a really professional application tool and it's just not that easy and it's, it doesn't come out that pretty. So, I mean, luckily I got it all dyed up and it looks fine unless you get like really close, but you can definitely see the glue all around the, uh, the lock collars. I guess another thing that, um, that I, that I found, or I found a, uh, another video where the guy was saying to buy angled fittings, like buy some 90 degree fittings, buy at least one dual rotary 90 degree, 45 slash 90 degree fitting. And, uh, and also, I don't know if he mentioned spacers, but I did buy a couple spacers, spacer fittings, and I used all of them. Like, they, they just helped immensely. And you don't, especially because you can get with the, uh, with the 90 degree fittings, you can get a really tight 90 degree bend where you might not exactly have enough space to make a bend in the tube and have that connection into the fitting. Um, so, you know, you might have too much of an, of an arc, so you can't get like a really sharp, uh, 90, 90 degree bend. Um, so you're, so you're able to get a lot tighter of bends with those. So it's, it's definitely, definitely something that like with a, with a moderate build like this, get three or four 90 degree fittings and at least one swivel fitting, one, uh, one dual rotary, uh, 90 degree fitting and definitely always get rotary fittings. And, uh, and I got one, I think like eight millimeter spacer or 10 millimeter spacer. And that, that actually allowed me to bring the, uh, the other fitting out away from the CPU water block and lined up with the, with the radiator input. So that worked great. Um, the other thing, another thing that you should do is measure, measure everything. So not all 200, just because your case says it'll fit a 140 millimeter radiator in the back, doesn't mean that every 140 millimeter radiator is going to fit in the back. In fact, there were only two that I found that would fit, and one of them was white. And I didn't want a white radiator, so uh, the other one was black. I managed to get this one, and even then it still doesn't fit perfectly. So that's something else you need to keep in mind. Uh, again, with the top, like, I could have fit a 280, but it would have been a weird fit. So I, I decided to go against that. But the other thing is that I would I would suggest unless unless you're going to load your system with a bunch of uh, of 120 millimeter uh, width, so like using 120 millimeter fans uh, radiators. So um, if I were going to do like the 240 at the top and then a 120 at the back and then a 360 at the front, um, just so that I could run all my fans really slowly. That would be something, but if you can fit a radiator that's for the uh, 140 millimeter fans, so a 140, a 280, a 420, um, I would I would definitely opt for those because the the uh, the 140 millimeter fans just run so much so much quieter for the amount of air that they for the amount of air that they push. Um, so for like ultimate silence you'd really want to go with the 140 millimeter fans. So tube bending, when you are bending the tubes. Uh, so I used PETG. It just sounded easier to work with than acrylic. When you're bending the tube, there are a couple uh, a couple variables that you have to take into account. Because I actually watched the uh, the Jay's Two Cents video on, on bending tubes. And he was saying that if you heat it too quickly it will, it will bubble. And that is true. Um, but it'll also bubble if you overheat it. So if you're like kind of holding it, you know, really high above the flame or above the flame, above the heat, the heat gun, but you hold it there for a little too long, it'll still start to get those bubbles too. So it's just, it's if the tube itself gets too hot, you'll get those bubbles, whether it be heating it too quickly or whether it be heating it too much over a long period of time, if you overheat the tube, you're going to get bubbles. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Uh, the other thing is really getting like a good section of the tube, because if you just heat a small, a small amount and then you do your bend, even though you heated that small amount pretty good, that's when you get that like flat corner. So going along the tubing lines, when I bought my first pack of, uh, when I bought my first, placed my first order, I bought one pack of four uh, 36 inch sticks of PETG 
PETG tubing, and I did half inch tubing, half inch outer diameter, three eighths inch inner diameter. And while that entire pack was enough, so like I went through two of the sticks just learning how to do the bends and messing them up and stuff. And then I did, I went through the other two sticks to actually get all my bends in place. And that was the first, uh, the first shot that you saw with it unfilled with like the U uh, loop, the U bend. And then I bought another pack and I think I used half, I think I used two sticks. So I, I still have two sticks left and I actually plan on, uh, you can see there's that, uh, that's, that's another change that you might've noticed was my, my GTX 660 Ti magically turned into a 1080. So I'm going to be using those extra tubing to water cool the graphics card once I get a water block for that. So buy, buy extra tubing. The point, the point is buy extra tubing. You need, you need extra tubing, especially if it's your first time. Um, you're, you're going to make a lot of mistakes. You're probably not going to be entirely happy with it. Like you'll, you'll get it to work and it'll probably look fairly good your first go around. But if you're, at least if you're anything like me, you're going to be like, well, I could have done that bend a little better. And eh, I kind of wish I had routed it this way instead of that way. And, uh... And yeah, you'll you'll end up wanting to redo it. And if you have if you've bought the extra tubing, you can just redo it. But yeah, so I think that's all I got for this video. Um, that's that's the extent of my water cooling knowledge and my experience. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, like always, leave them down in the comments. I try to get to pretty much every every post that warrants a response. And uh, yeah, I'm probably going to be posting one uh, another video specifically on water cooling the uh, the Cooler Master case here. So just kind of. Uh, challenges and stuff that I that I faced with that but uh, and, and eventually a review type video thing of the 1080 um, but yeah so uh, stay tuned for those and I will see you in the next one